Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7, Episode 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for the episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we're supposed to have a three-week break. I am presuming it's still happening. I'll update you guys if there's any changes. But for now, we may not have The Flash for the next three weeks, but we'll still have Supergirl on a Tuesday. So you're still going to get a review on Tuesday night, right after the episode comes out. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about tonight's episode. It was really good. I was really, really engaged throughout, and you had some great moments, especially between Iris and Barry. Also, Speed Force Nora was quite a nice addition to the episode, her kind of darting around following Barry and their storyline. Also, Kramer was interesting, and we got the introduction to Chillblain, who is a villain who's going to be recurring throughout multiple episodes, and he was really good, so I can't wait to talk about this. Obviously, there are some twists and turns that we're going to break down and kind of freak out about throughout this video, so please be sure to stick around. Also, remember, later tomorrow, we're going to have my Supergirl review out, so please be sure to tune in for that. It may be a bit later tomorrow, but still, please be sure to check in later in the evening. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and go to the start of the episode. So, Barry arrives home. And so he walks in, there is this breakfast table laid out, you're like, oh, this was Iris. Wow, Iris can make a really nice looking breakfast. But then the camera pans over and you get to see it's in fact Nora, Speed Force Nora, who made the breakfast. And I kind of laughed and I was like, oh yeah, of course. Like, they always make jokes about Iris not being able to make breakfast or like pancakes. I remember that was like a big thing in season four in like one episode. And then, so now you're like, wow, Iris, this is awesome. But she did help, so, you know, that was a funny scene to start off the episode. And you get the explanation of what's going on to do with Barry's speed. His speed is out of control, his hand kind of phases, and he destroys this bottle and, you know, water or, you know, orange juice goes everywhere. And so it's quite awkward between Barry and Nora in these scenes, because Barry doesn't feel that comfortable calling number one her Nora and number two having her around his house because obviously he sees the speed force you know this kind of bigger than life force that he's always thought about in a certain way but now she is eating food she is basically being a human or becoming a human and Barry is kind of weirded out by this and so he has to have this sort of adjustment period where, you know, by the end of the episode, he actually comes around to this. But, again, we all have been theorizing that something else might be going on with Speed Force Nora, and we're going to get to that because there is an interesting twist in the episode that I was like, hmm, maybe this could be a hint towards what she is trying to achieve. And so, yeah, she's like family, says Iris, and it definitely seems like that is going to be the way, but that might be the setup of her betraying them and becoming a villain or you know not really a villain but like taking down the other forces to make her more powerful to make the speed force more powerful whereas uh maybe that's not the best thing to do okay so this episode is heavy on frost obviously next episode is the trial episode for killer frost and so it's going to be big on her again so i really enjoyed all of Danielle Panabaker's scenes. She did a really good job with Caitlyn and Frost this episode. Like, I'm always a huge fan. Like, she's definitely one of my favorite characters on the show. But this episode, I think she really, really nailed it. And so Frost has quarantined in Star Labs. That's how we start off the episode. Obviously, very topical and very timely. And this is because of Kramer, who is sending out basically the warrant for her arrest. And so this leads into the crime scene where Frost is actually targeted. So she's set up. And so Kramer is 100% after Frost and she has some sort of prejudice against her. Also, I wanted to mention Chester was really good in this episode. Obviously, coming off of last episode, I feel like we just like him more, you know? Like, we feel like we understand him. Well, that's how I personally felt because I felt like last episode was really good. And it was actually a really good episode. It was very funny and everything. But I really like that we got to see more of Chester's origin. And now, you know, every time I see him, I'm like, yes, Chester, I love that guy. So, you know, I thought he did a really good job in this episode. And talking about Chester, Chester reveals the Frost, 
about what's going on with Kramer because Chester was at the crime scene. That was a funny bit that they did, being like, oh, Chester is like the replacement Cisco of the episode because obviously Carlos wasn't in this episode. I don't really remember where Cisco was. However, he's the CCPD consultant, just like Cisco normally does. So, you know, he got called in and he was very, very excited. And so Frost is going after Chillblain and we get the reveal of Chillblain where they meet each other for the first time. And so Frost has a fight with the bar people and this is right as the warrant goes out on the TV. And so she beats everyone up and he helps her out and they have a crazy moment. And I was like, whoa, what is going on here? And it definitely reminded me of the Amunet and Goldface moment that everyone memes about because in the background of this scene there was this music and I was like, oh my god, like they did this on purpose to get memes. So it was very funny, I really enjoyed it and it was kind of crazy. And so at the same time you have Barry who runs into Kramer's car at the crime scene. This is also as Speed Force Nora shows up just before this. And so she is basically darting around with him throughout this whole episode based on his emotions. And so this kind of annoying Barry bit by bit. And his speed is set into overdrive. That's why he crashes into Kramer's car. And you're like, oh my god, has Barry's identity been revealed as a speedster? However, she did hear the bang on the car. However, you know, it was Barry and Barry wasn't able to run away. But... He is able to get away with it in a very funny way where he's like, yes, infrared footsteps. Come on, come on, Kramer, use your brain. But anyway, that was a really, really funny scene. And I liked how close she got to finding out his secret identity. Imagine if she did. And so at Barry's lab, you have this scene with Nora and Chester. And Chester makes his reference saying that Nora, well, Speed Force Nora is like their Zordon, like Team Flash's Zordon. I thought that was really funny. That is a Power Rangers reference. Also, there was an Amazons reference. So that means that the Amazons do exist inside the Arrowverse. Could that mean Wonder Woman shows up at some point? Not sure. Maybe this was implanted when they were going to do the Wonder Girl spinoff, but that got cancelled. So I don't know if it was just like a one-off Easter egg. Well, it seemed like it was. Allegra just referred to Killer Frost as badass, essentially. And so this is what I was talking about at the start of the video, where I said there was this one scene where I was like, did Nora do this on purpose? Is Nora controlling Barry? And so Barry gets annoyed in the scene inside his lab, and Barry's speed starts freaking out. He starts running everywhere, all around his lab, and the data is destroyed. And so... Obviously, this is because she is nearby and his speed force powers are going crazy. However, could it be something more to that? Is it that she's controlling him because she wanted to help out here in this specific instance? So she made him run around like crazy. She implanted that extra boost of speed because she knows that Parry is unable to control it and basically led him to destroying the data so that she can help. That's my kind of theory about that scene. That's why I initially thought. Obviously, that isn't the complete right answer. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you guys think about this? And obviously, anything else you want to talk about to do with the episode, please be sure to comment that below. Okay, so let's continue on from here. So they arrest Caitlyn instead of Frost. That was a big scene where they're knocking on the door and you think they're going after Frost. But then Frost is sort of hit by the scanner when she is looking out for Chillblain, the new meta, or supposedly a meta. And so, Caitlyn is arrested and is taken into custody. And so, Frost comes and saves Caitlyn. And Caitlyn and Cecile talk her out of it. And this is at the point where she realizes that Chillblane is not a meta, but he's actually someone who is obsessed with her. And so, you get this really good scene, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Because let's go back to Joe quick. He has this scene with Kramer, they have a talk. He puts his stance out there and basically tells her what's what and she is very much so stuck in her ways at the same time. So that was a really good scene. Joe is great. I think Kramer is interesting, I would say. Back at Barry's apartment, Barry and Iris talk about Nora where Iris basically puts some sense into Barry and she's like, Iris believes that Nora is changed and is something more now. And Barry also repeats this line later, something more. 
So what is she something more? Like, is she a complete god? Like, is she beyond just a force? And if she injects and sort of inhales all these other forces, is she going to be like a god or a god speed? So obviously that is just a theory to put out there. However, she's going to be very powerful if they do stop the other forces. And in this conversation, Iris tells Barry a very tender and touching story that is actually very, very important to what is going on here. I thought it was a nice parallel and it made for a great scene. So congrats, Candace and Grant, you killed it. Especially Candace in that scene, actually, because she was the main focus and she was telling Barry what's what. So that was really great. Okay, so Frost confronts Chillblain. This is a scene I was talking about. So he is in a meta, he synthesizes dark matter at the crime scene. That's what they find out with the scans. Additionally, Chillblain is a stalker kind of. For Frost and Caitlin, he's been researching and basically following all of their steps. And so he replicates her powers. That was his aim. And he's able to do that since what happened earlier in the episode. And so Chillblain is great. Like I said, he's very convincing. And basically he moves on, well the character moves on to talk about his death and he talks about how Ice has the ability to maneuver and control life and death. And they proceed to have a fight, Frost actually stops him by literally impaling herself and him and she uses her speed or Frost healing I guess and he is bandaged up by Barry who shows up on the scene. Also when they were leaving Star Labs it's important to note that Allegra picked up Nash's satchel it looked like, or at least her own version of that. So that's a call back and maybe that's something that she's going to be exploring, trying to be a bit more like him I guess. And so that was a very nice moment. And so Frost is surrounded by CCPD by the end of the episode. And she actually decides to give herself up. So I thought that was an interesting twist, obviously we knew it was happening. And it was a little bit predictable because we knew we were getting this trial episode next week. However, it was very, very good the way that they did it because Barry and Allegra came up to the scene and Allegra's like, no, you can't do it. And Barry's like, no, you shouldn't do it. But then Frost gives her side of it, saying that, yes, I haven't answered for anything, you know, before I helped out with Team Flash and maybe this is for the best. So it's a different side of Frost that we haven't really seen. and We definitely didn't see this episode because she was so adamant against it and against kind of the law, like she was even going to break into CCPD to get Caitlyn out and obviously that would have messed up things even more if Caitlyn escaped. That would be terrible for her, so I'm glad she didn't do that. And so, yeah, great stuff with Frost this episode, like I said, Danielle Panabaker killed it. And so by the end of the episode, you have Barry and Nora talking, that being Speed Force Nora, and so they join kind of forces and it's a great, nice way to combine the two characters in that it looks kind of like they understand each other and that it's a different relationship and a different dynamic, just like Iris was explaining earlier in the episode to Barry, than what they had before, being like a Speed Force entity out there in the actual Speed Force, to the Speed Force literally coming to Earth and becoming a human. So Barry's got to get used to that, Nora's got to be used to not being you know, always around Barry all the time and popping up whenever he needs her, he's gonna call her if he needs her help. So, you know, that is a full kind of art for this episode. And in the scene, Barry says they're gonna stop all of the forces. And this is because Nora's speed force has already replenished or is nearly fully replenished. And Barry has control of his powers now. So that's the kind of twist right at the end of the episode. There wasn't actually a cliffhanger this episode, but I guess that kind of counts because it was the last few frames with the final scene. And so with Barry saying that they're going to stop all the forces, that means they're going to be teaming up. So maybe we're going to see kind of like the speed force running alongside Barry and Barry running alongside the speed force. I think that will be a really cool scene and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm wondering, is there something else going on with the Speed Force? Do you guys still think the same as me? I do think that one thing I talked about was a hint when they were inside Barry's CCPD lab and she literally destroyed the one thing that Barry was literally using and it felt like maybe she was controlling him and she's somehow able to control when Barry 
goes on these crazy runs like impulsively but that's about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video remember to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new but for now you can click right here for my latest video also remember tomorrow night supergirls review is coming out on my channel it's going to be a little bit later than normal, but just bear with me. I am super busy and I'm filming tomorrow, so I'm not going to get back until a bit later. So bear with me and I really appreciate it if you guys tune in, even though it's going to be a tiny bit later. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.